Well, good evening, everybody, and welcome to Gateway Church Cymru Online. My name is Luke Morgan, and I'm the pastor of Gateway, and I want to give you a warm welcome this evening. Thank you for joining us for our online Bible study. You know, I can't believe we've been doing this online Bible study for over five weeks now, and it's incredible to think how long we've been stuck in lockdown, but I'm hoping that it won't be too much longer. And I hope that you're doing okay. Hope that you're coping through it all and that God is giving you his strength and his peace at this time. Please know we are praying for you as a church. And if there is anything that we can do to, to help you at this time, please get in touch with us. We'd love to help you. But you know, this, this online Bible study all began from a word that God laid on my heart, which was that we should use this time, use this season to go deeper into God's word as his people, that we might grow in our relationship with God, not just for head knowledge, but that we might grow in our relationship with the Lord. So I'm so glad that we're still able to do this online Bible study and we're going to continue this over the next couple of weeks as well. So let's begin our time together this evening just by opening up in prayer. And I want to encourage you, go and grab a notepad, grab your phone, grab your pen, whatever it might be, and let's get ready to dive into this session this evening. But let's just begin with prayer. Amen. Lord, we just thank you this evening that you're a God who longs to speak to us. Lord, that you are the God who made the way possible for us to have a relationship with you, that we might know you. Jesus, we just want to say thank you tonight. And Lord, I just pray that even as we come around your word this evening, Lord, that you would speak to us, you would encourage us, you would help us. Lord, that you would move in our hearts and lives, that you would change us so that our lives would bring glory and honour to your name. Lord, we just thank you and ask this in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen. Well, over the next couple of weeks, we're going to build upon the foundation that we have laid over these last five weeks. You know, we've looked at what the Bible is. We've looked at how the Bible was put together. We've looked at the story of the Bible. And last week, I began to share um, tips and strategies on how we can read and study the Bible. And so we're going to apply everything that we've learned in the coming weeks. And we're going to actually begin a new series together. And we're going to look at an important aspect of Jesus' ministry. And we're going to look at the parables of Jesus. That's the new series that we're going through in the coming weeks, the parables of Jesus. Now, I do want to say right off the bat that we're not going to look at all the parables of Jesus. In the Gospels, there are over 52 parables that Jesus speaks and shares. And we're not going to look at all of those, but we are going to look at a few. And we're going to look at some that might be familiar to you as well. So this evening, I just want to give an introduction to the parables of Jesus. And then next week, we're going to begin to look at some of the parables. You know, I'm sure that if you've been watching online for the last couple of weeks, and if you attend our church, you'll know that in my sermons, I started to include more and more illustrations and stories. You might have noticed that, you might not have noticed that. But I've started to include more and more illustrations and stories in my sermons. And if you come to our church, you'll know that my dad also does this. My dad often brings along props with him. You know, he'll bring a carrier bag full of props and he uses these in his sermons. And tonight I want to lay you into a little preacher's secret. There's a reason why we use stories and we bring props and all these in illustrations into our sermons. And the reason is, is we use these to help people connect with the message. We want to make the message as simple as we can and we want people to remember what we have shared from God's word so that they can apply it to their lives. And I know that if you've watched many preachers online there that we aren't the only ones who do this. There are so many preachers and pastors and leaders who use stories and illustrations to help people connect with their messages. And there's a reason for this. The reason is because people remember stories. Stories stick you know, if there's a funny story or oftentimes a sad story, you know, or a story with uh, an important meaning to it. You know, these stories, they re stick. We remember them. They resonate with us. They help us connect to that message. You know, if I just got up on a, on a Sunday off, I just tuned in online and began streaming and just sharing fact after fact with you. I'm pretty sure that you would just forget about it. You would switch it off or you just tune out. You wouldn't listen to it. But stories help us and they help us connect with the message. And, you know, I'm sure you'd agree with me on that. However, I do have to say tonight that this wasn't just an idea that I came up with or my dad came up with. This is something that's been used for hundreds and thousands of years. Many preachers and pastors in the years gone by have used this. 
But there's also somebody else who used this technique, and that is Jesus. Jesus used stories. He used illustrations in his messages to help people connect with his idea, with the message that he wanted to get across. You know, it's been said that Jesus is an incredible teacher. You know, I'm sure we'd all agree on that. Jesus was a phenomenal teacher. Listen to what it says in Matthew chapter 13 and verse 54. It says, he returned to Nazareth, his hometown. When he taught there in the synagogue, everyone was amazed and said, where does he get this wisdom and the power to do miracles? You know, many people were in awe of Jesus and his teachings. People came from all over just to listen to him, to listen to him teach. People would follow him around for days and weeks on end just to listen to Jesus' messages. And you know, it wasn't just the content of his messages which gripped people, although that was the ultimate thing that drew people to Jesus. You know, he spoke with an authority. He spoke out of that God authority within him and that gripped people. But also it was his style. Jesus had an incredible preaching style. And we see that as we read through the Gospels that Jesus was able to preach and people would just sit there for hours and hours on end. They would even forget about food as we read in the story of the five loaves and two fish. You know, we see people, the crowds were there, over 5,000 people. They'd been sat there all day and they were getting hungry because they'd just been sitting there listening to Jesus. Jesus knew how to hold the people's attention and people were just totally gripped by his messages. And as you read through the Gospels, you see time and time again that Jesus, whenever he was teaching, whenever he was preaching, he often used stories and parables in his teaching. Now, you might be wondering, what is a parable? Now, a parable, it basically means something that is thrown alongside something else. That's what it means in the original Greek. It's, it's something that's thrown alongside something else. A parable basically is a simple story used to illustrate a spiritual lesson. And Jesus would often do this. However, Jesus wasn't the one who originated with the idea to use parables in his teaching. This was actually something that the Pharisees and rabbis did during that time. They would often use parables and stories to help people understand the law, the Mosaic law. But Jesus, he used parables to, to bring about new teaching, to amplify that teaching on the law. And he, he used these parables so people could understand what he was preaching. And the reason he used those parables, as I said, is so people would understand. You know, these parables that Jesus used, they weren't just for a, a select audience. You know, Jesus didn't just preach in parables just to confuse people. Or he didn't use parables just so that his followers would understand. But actually, Jesus used parables so that everybody can understand, so that all people could understand the message in which he was sharing. And, you know, these stories were often about everyday things, things that were common to all the people at that time. You know, he spoke about farmers. He spoke about seeds. He spoke about lamps. You know, he spoke about all these different stories so that people could connect with at that time. People understood those stories. They, they were used to that because of the culture and the time in which they were living in. And so Jesus shared these parables for all people, not just a select group of people. However, there were many people who just didn't understand the parables. They just didn't understand it. They just didn't grasp the meaning of the parables. And you know, they were in the same crowd, they heard the same story, but they were always people who didn't understand the message in which Jesus was trying to share and just didn't understand the parable. And the reason why they didn't understand, it wasn't because it was too intellectual for them, but oftentimes the reason they didn't understand was because their hearts were hard towards the Lord and to his teachings. They just didn't want to accept it. They didn't want to apply it to their lives. And you know, sadly, it's the same today. There are many people, even maybe some people who are watching online tonight, you know, and over the next couple of weeks, many people who, do, who hear these sermons, hear these messages, hear about Jesus, hear about the good news. But many people just won't accept it. They will reject it because their hearts are hard and they won't like the teaching. They won't apply it to their lives. And so there were many people who misunderstood those parables. And that will always be the case. But you know, Jesus, he used these parables to help people understand the message that he was sharing. And you know, one theme that Jesus often uses his parables for, there was a theme that he used parables for, and that theme was the kingdom of God. 
You know, Jesus would often talk about the kingdom of God and to help people understand what the kingdom of God was like, he'd use parables. You know, he'd often say that the kingdom of heaven is like the kingdom of God is like. And he used these parables so people would understand the culture. They would understand what the kingdom of God was like, the values of the kingdom of God, how what the kingdom of God was like. You know, he used these parables to help understand and explain the mystery of the kingdom. I know Jesus, whenever he used these parables, he didn't speak on a lot of different subjects. He would often speak on one key subject. And his parables would often have just one central idea. They would have one central message. Now, there are occasions in the Gospels where you'll see where Jesus had two meanings uh, in his parables. But more often than not, the parables just had one central message so the people could understand. And it was the, based on the teaching in which he was sharing at that time to the people or to the crowds or whoever it was. It was just one central idea. And so over the next couple of weeks, I'm looking forward to, to diving into the parables of Jesus. You know, it's going to be so exciting to look at all these different ones, which I'm sure you'll be familiar with many of them. And you know, these parables weren't just for, meant for the people in Jesus's time. But I believe these parables have incredible meaning for us today. We are to impl- apply the truths to our lives today. And I pray that God will speak to us, that God will help us. And I pray that it will help you in studying the Bible and reading the Bible as we begin to apply the methods that we've learned over these last couple of weeks. But as we come to a conclusion this evening, there are two que- key questions that we need to ask when we study these parables. And I want you to hold on to these. I want you to remember these as we look at the parables in the next couple of weeks. These two key questions that we need to ask when we study the parables. And the first question that we need to ask is what I've just shared at the end of this message is, what is Jesus' central message? What is Jesus' central message? That's the first que- question we need to, need to ask. And then the second question we need to ask when we study the parables is how does this apply to me? How does this apply to my life? So as I said, I can't wait to to look at these parables. You know, it's going to be so exciting to get into these together. I want to encourage you, please go ahead and start jumping into them. You can find them in the Gospels. You know, it's interesting to note that the, the parables are uh, contained in the Gospels. You know, there's no other mention of parables in the New Testament. Parables are only used within the Gospels, which is interesting. So have a look in the new, in the Gospels. Begin to look at some of these parables. And just something to help you in your Bible study and help you as you do that. There'll be a template which I created a few weeks ago for us and f- for us as a church. And I want to encourage you, please use it if you don't already have a method to study the Bible. This template, the link for it will be up in the comments or whatever social media platform you're watching this on this evening. You can download it, it's free of charge. And I pray that it will help you and and you can have that to study the Bible. But, you know, I pray you've been encouraged by this introduction tonight. And I'm looking forward over the next couple of weeks to look at this new series together, The Parables of Jesus. Amen. It's been so great that we've been able to come together this week for our online Bible study. And that's it for this evening. Thank you for joining us. And I want to encourage you, please stay connected with us as a church. You can do this through our social media platforms. We're on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter and on YouTube as well. You can also stay connected with us through our website, gatewaychurchcamry.co.uk. But we look forward to joining together once again on Sunday. We'll be joining together at 10.30 in the morning and we're going to be continuing our Real Freedom series. It'll be streamed on our website and on Facebook and on YouTube and on Instagram as well. Our Sunday service in the morning will be streamed on Instagram. And then we'll be joining together again at 5 p.m. as well. So please know we are here for you as a church. We are praying for you and I believe that God's going to do great things and let's use this season to grow in him. Have a great weekend. God bless.